Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add health indicators in VR onto your controllers. So what I'm going to do is actually turn these uh, trackpads in game into health indicators. You could also use them for mana indicators or anything else. We're just going to fill that circle and have it go up and down based off of a value. So the first thing I'm going to do, I've pulled in a camera rig, but I want to turn these into Steam VR track controllers. Uh, if I can spell that right, Steam VR track controllers, and that's just so that we can use the events easily. And I've created a player health script. This is just going to be attached to our camera rig, and what what it does is give us a, a way to set a max health. We set that current health to max health in awake, and then whenever we click the trigger on the controller, we're only going to use one controller right now. Whenever we click that trigger, we'll just remove health and then we'll fire off an on health percent changed event. So right now that's not hooked up to anything. What we're going to do is create the indicator and the script for it, hook all that up and then show it in action. So let's jump back over to Unity. And the first thing I want to do is just press play and show where this thing's going to show up. So if I expand out the controller, and again, if you look at the model right here, you'll see there's a whole bunch of components. There's even a a trackpad component right there. We can't do anything really with this because it's generated at runtime and it's controlled by the uh, Steam VR track controller script, or I guess it's actually the uh, tracked object script or the controller manager. One of those is taking control of this. Notice that we can't move this around or adjust it really. What we can do, however, is create a cylinder. So I'm going to right click on the controller, go to 3D object, and create a cylinder. You see we have a nice giant cylinder. I'll scale that thing way, 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 way down. Get it to a, a level that looks like it's about the same width. Then just move it over the controller's trackpad. Ooh, it's a little bit hard to navigate around, by the way, when you're this zoomed in. So just be prepared for that. Uh, I'll zoom this, or scale this thing down so it's not as tall. Just get it just over the size of that. And let's see, let's go in at this angle. And then I want to rotate it just so that it covers up perfectly. I think I'm actually going to scale this down just a little bit more. There, and then I'll take a look at it in the headset just to make sure that it looks right. So it should look like just a white circle over the trackpad. Yeah, that's pretty close. It looks pretty good. It is blocking my trackpad view just a little bit though. So I think I'll shrink it down a tiny bit more. Let's grab that. Oh, that's too much. Too much. And let's try moving it. Just want to get this oh, okay it, it looks like it needs a little bit more rotation so which one was that is that the x right here yeah so just rotate a little bit more on the x there we go i can see my my dot now that's kind of what i was looking for i wanted to be able to see where i'm touching on the track back so that looks good uh before i stop though i have to make sure that i copy the component so what i'm gonna do is right click on the transform copy component stop playing Right click on the controller again, create that cylinder one more time and just paste in the transform values. So now I have my indicator. It's this little circle and it's positioned as an offset exactly where it needs to be for the controller. And I'll rename it to a uh, health indicator. Now we have a health indicator script, but if you look at it, it's nice and empty. First thing I'm gonna do is just attach it to the component or the game object. Then we'll open up the script and do a little bit of editing. So let's see, remove the extra comments. We'll mark this as private, even though it's already private. And then we'll do find object of type player health dot on health percent change plus equals. And I'm just going to hit tab to auto generate the method. If you're not in Visual Studio, you can't do that. You may have to go in and type out private void, some method name. You're going to have to make sure the method name matches. And then it needs a float. Again, I just use control period, nice, fast, simple shortcut to save me a lot of time. So here we're passing in the health percent. And what I want to do is adjust something based off the health percent. We don't have anything to adjust though. Here, first let's clean up, update, get rid of all this extra white space and these two extra using statements and that. And then let's go back over to the editor one more time. So we have a piece of art here. This is, uh, I'll make this available to download. It's literally just a white strip where the alpha is a gradient. So if you look at this in uh, Photoshop, let's see if you can kind of see it in here. Let's see if I can make this a little bit smaller. Just like that. So you see it's just a white 
And then it has an alpha mask. You just use the alpha mask button, which is off screen again. There we go. Alpha mask button right there. Create a mask uh, in the alpha. It's just a gradient using the gradient tool. So that's all this thing is. Just a gradient, single pixel wide strip. Now I want to create a material. So let's create a new material. And I'll call this health indicator. Just keep the name matching. And then assign this gradient white material. And then I want to give this thing a color. So I'm going to go with a red. It's a health bar, right? Now I'll select my health indicator, drop that material on there. So if we go right in here, we can replace the material there. Or you can just drop it down here and it replaces it. And then expand out the, uh, the material. And right here where it has rendering mode of opaque, we're just going to change it to cutout. Now when you do that, you'll see we have an alpha cutoff option a slider here. And we can just slide this up and down to cut out the alpha. And this is what we're going to use to update our health. So we'll essentially adjust this alpha cutoff and it's going to go up and down. So here, if I hit play and I start, here, let's get the controller in front of the headset. There we go. And then I drag the alpha cutoff. You see the value just goes, it aligns up and the health bar basically goes down and up. So we're almost done. Now we're going to jump back over to the code. And right in here, what we want to do is get a reference to the material and then modify the material based off the health percentage. So first thing I'll do is cache the material. So do a private material, material. And then right here in awake, we'll just do material equals get component render dot material. And then in the health indicator change on percent on health percent change, what we'll do is material dot set property or set float and then we do underscore capital C and it's cut off C U T O F F and then we pass in the percent. Now we don't want to pass in the actual percent. What we want to do is one minus the percent. So we're just inverting the percent here. And with that, I should be able to jump back into the editor, press play. And then remember I have the trigger set up to remove some amount of health. I forget how much it was. So every time I pull the trigger, I should be losing health. Am I losing health? Oh, no, nope. we have a null reference exception. Let me check that out real quick. So health indicator dot start. Oh, I didn't actually add the player health script. So let's go one more time. I'm going to select the camera rig and add the player health script. And again, this only needs to be on the camera rig because we are using a Git component in children to find the controller to register for that click event. Otherwise, we wouldn't need to. It could be anywhere. Okay, let's try this one more time. So here we go. I click the trigger. And okay, our trigger's going down, but nothing's happening. Let's see why. Oh, I see what happened. I had the uh, event firing on this or registering on this controller and the health is on the other controller. So I pulled the trigger on this one. You see the health is actually going down. Now I could uh, easily just make a quick change to our script on the player health. In fact, I'll do that right now and then wrap this up. So if we go to player health, what I want to do instead of get component in children, um, I'm going to cut that and it'll do for each bar controller in get components in children and then call controller dot trigger clicked plus equals remove health. So now we're just registering for either controller. So it works on both of them. It's a nice simple fix. Let me try it one more time. Just grab a controller, get that red bar there and start clicking. Let's see, there we go. that's it. And I click and you can see my health is going down. Now if I had some health regen in here, I could make the health slowly scale back up. Nice and easy, just do an update in the player health and send off that event, everything should work. So this is just one way that you can set up player health in a VR game. There are a bunch of different ways that you can indicate it. I've used things like, you know, big wall displays, little displays in front of the player, masked overlays, or even like a beating heart with some heartbeat sounds. Um, this is just a cool little simple one that I think is useful and it's a, you know, at very least it's a good little placeholder for your game while you're developing and figuring out your whole UI system. So hope this helps. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to just drop a comment below. If you like the video, of course, don't forget to like and hit the subscribe button and thanks for watching.